And this is a delicate thing to say to a group of leaders uh, in their House of Parliament, but uh, um, you, uh, you have to fight the cancer of corruption that is, uh, that is endemic in your system right now. Really recently, in November, around Thanksgiving, President Trump told Fox News, why should we give money to a country that's known corrupt? It's a very corrupt country. I mean, I love the people in Ukraine. I know Ukrainian people, they're great people, but it's known as being the third most corrupt country in the world. These days, the corruption in Ukraine is all over the news. But for Ukrainians, corruption isn't new, it's old. And it's not just among the bigwigs and businessmen, it's kind of everywhere. In a way, corruption is almost part of the culture. In fact, they put these, uh, these bins outside of the parliament for this particular reason, or symbolically saying that they needed to throw politicians into the trash. In this case, they actually uh, did that to one, in, one politician in particular. But I think what we need to uh, keep in mind is this really shows the, uh, the emotions surrounding the issue and surrounding, indeed, uh, the entire issue of corruption in, uh, in Ukraine. As recently as 2018, Transparency International ranked Ukraine the 60th most corrupt country in the world. Political corruption has been so ingrained in the landscape of Ukrainian politics that there's even a museum of corruption near the capital, Kiev. It's a palatial estate built by ex-Ukrainian President Viktor Yanukovych from $2 billion stolen from Ukraine's treasury. But five years since Ukraine's former president was forced to flee into exile in Russia, corruption remains an evil the country can't seem to shake off. We can't build reform when the, all the, the, the state, all the institutions are corrupted. It's another day in court for Vitaly Shabunin, a prominent activist who's made plenty of enemies investigating corruption among officials. A chemical substance thrown at him last year did no lasting damage, but it could have been worse. Another anti-corruption activist, Katerina Hanchuk, was the victim of an acid attack that killed her, slowly, after three agonizing months in hospital. You're willing to die? I, but I, of course I am not willing to die. But, uh... It's part of my job. But you accept that that is a risk inherent in what you do? In this country, of course, it's a risk. Xander Daniluk was Ukraine's finance minister until last summer when he was fired for refusing to be part of a government scheme to buy the votes of MPs in parliament. Combating corruption was one of President Zelensky's most important but his connections to one of Ukraine's richest oligarchs and the phone call with President Trump in which he said that the state prosecutor was 100% his person has caused some concerns. The allegation in Moscow is that many of the staff yeah. in your office in Odessa today are being paid for by the US government. Yeah. Is that true? No, but let, let me... Uh, let no, me, hang on. Is it, is it no, true? No, it's not true. But so you, who is no, funding you, all of no, the no, staff US, you've US, with US, you? Uh, US government has expressed very strong support for our anti-corruption search. Are they providing funds? Uh, they are providing funds for the programs that we are running. But these are not government officials. These are people from which these are programs from which we take... Re That's re a no. very fine distinction. No, no. There's a yes. lot of US look, money behind you. Look, it's yes. a big point of, and that of is telling the world, hang on, about the California California police who are coming yes, to California train police, your police. Are, actually, today we had a uh, first march of new police, exactly tailored after the Georgian model. That's precisely what Moscow is talking about. Right? Behind all of the yes. power in Ukraine is a United no. States agenda. And pulling back from one and possibly two spots along the front lines. It's an effort by Ukraine's new president, Vladimir Zelensky, to conclude a war that's challenged the core of his government. And not uh, all the people in Ukraine accept this, but this is like the one reason for the meeting with Ukrainian president Mr. Zelensky, Russian president Vladimir Putin, Angela Merkel and president of France Mr. Macron. So President Zelensky is trying to find a peace process, a solution for the war. What interesting to me is how they used to speak about Ukraine before Russia's invasion, right? They never said anything good about them. But now we're fighting for a democracy. They are a great government. They are honest. They are truthful. They don't cancel elections. They don't arrest political opponents. Well, that's where Biden learned it from. They don't shut down news networks that criticize Zelensky. Oh, and did I mention they don't cancel elections?